I love a good tune. Music is constantly going in my head, streaming live, and I just used uh, today's relevancy, if you will. But, you know, there's nothing better than seeing something live and seeing the action and feeling the music and feeling the power. Uh, so with all that being said, I have with me today Maestro Luke Frazier, and he's with American Pops Orchestra. So thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you're probably looking at me right now. Of course, this is radio. It's not television. So you can probably just see my head, my eyes, my arms flying all over the place because I love music. Music is everything. Is it for you? Oh, absolutely. On the way here, I was listening to a whole bunch of different types of music, some Casey Musgraves, some Motown. I kind of like to listen to a little bit of everything. Yes. So I was singing along, <laughs> warming up my voice just to be with you. Right. There you go. <laughs> so... First of all, I'm going to call you Maestro. Yes. Okay. And unlike the American version of Maestro, tap, 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 tap. So Maestro, <laughs> um, you're young. You're, well, I mean, not you're as young. young as I used to be. I'll tell you that Me much. neither. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> in your position, my goodness, that's so exciting. I mean, I'm used to seeing, you know, our, uh, how should I say it, our more traditionally seasoned, well-placed, I've been waiting for this opportunity for a lifetime kind of maestros. And so to have you here um, and then knowing that you're a young guy just doing your thing, how exciting is that? Well, I think, you know, I fall into that category of you pick your path and you blaze it. And so for me, I've been one of those people my whole life where when when I think there's an opportunity, then I go full steam ahead and say, I want to make a difference with this music. And that's what I've that's what I've tried to do with all of my orchestral work and all of my piano work and everything I do. And it's so funny you say about seeing the different kind of conductors, because I get that all the time. People always expect a gray haired person to, you know, hobble out on stage and <laughs> prop himself up on the bar. But, uh, you know, that'll be a few years out. Out, right. Probably sooner rather than later. Nah. <laughs> I don't see any gray but yeah, in your future. I say, you know, you got to be a disruptor in this mm -hmm. world. You know, I'm not one to just follow along. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I'm here for. So American Pops Orchestra, tell mm -hmm. me about it. So in 2015, I kind of got this wild hair that I was tired of the way Pops orchestras were doing things. It wasn't the way I wanted to do things. And so my entire vision for this was to take classic American music and do it in new ways and try to bring in a much more diverse audience. Because one of the other common problems with orchestras is that it's mostly just an older audience. And believe me, mm. you know, I feel like I'm the youngest member of AARP. But <laughs> I also I also like to go out. I like to have a few drinks. I like to dance. I like to listen to a lot of kinds of music. Right. And I realized that, you know, this orchestra should be about bringing people together. And so that's what we try to do. And I started this group then to, to shake it up and to say, you know what, I'm going to do it my way. Um, you know, for better, for worse, for the mistakes, for the successes, it's going to be a, it's going to be the way I envision it. And I'm happy to say that our audiences are growing and mm -hmm. we consistently uh, see a much more diverse audience coming in than you typically see at other concerts. So uh, how I mean, did you find friends? I mean, how did you do this? I don't get it. <laughs> I like you're, you're, I'm hanging out at a bar one day and I say to Sally, hey, you play a mean tuba. You want to be right. in my orchestra? I mean, come on. You know, it's basically just an orchestra of tubas. I'll tell you that right. much. <laughs> no, I uh, love a good brass. Exactly. Um, I actually played French horn. So that's a lie. Really? For a little bit. My okay. God. Let's go back. Horn okay. family. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I started this group and I reached out to a friend of mine who is a fabulous contractor. His name's Jim Kelly. He's one of the owners of Potter's Violins. Go Potters. Mm -hmm. um, and so he helped me hold auditions and find the very best players in town. And so we have hand selected every player in that group, which is also very unique because I was able to say, I love your sound. I love your energy. Mm. And so we have a great group, not only of fantastic musicians, but really nice people. And we, the great thing about sitting in our rehearsals is we have so much fun. You know, <laughs> so many of my orchestra players say that that's one of the things they love is not only the high caliber musicianship, but that it feels like a family. And I firmly believe 
that the audience can feel that as well, that it's not in us and them. It's mm-hmm. about all of us. Right. And, you know, that's one thing that is really important when you're on stage is to be able to translate that energy. Um, how boring would it be just to play for yourself? I mean, that's what rehearsal is. Yes. You know. And that's why, again, even in rehearsal, we try to build that sense of community. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the great things about being housed at Arena Stage, which is where the orchestra mainly performs, and by the way, we're the only orchestra that performs there, is that we perform perform in Fit Chandler, which is a theater completely in the round. And how many times oh, have you gone to see gosh. an orchestra performance where you can see every angle, you're right there up close, and it's a pretty magical experience. And again, you're never more than about 10 or 12 rows away from the people making the music. That's exciting. I'm, I really have goosebumps. I, I love, like I said before, I love music. And one of my desires was to be able to sing professionally when I was younger. I, I was just telling my husband the other day, I was one of those kids that would have a musical in my head. I'd be in the middle of the street dancing to this <laughs> beautifully put together piece of music. You know, but in my world, you know, it was just going. And I'm sure if somebody drove by, they'd probably say, hey, kid, get on the sidewalk. You're going to get hit. So so how do we get how do we get our young minds involved with music to want to stay with it after say high school you know how do we how do we keep them engaged well i think music is about community ultimately you know i think too often i hear conversations where there's high art and low art and you know i think too many young people are led to believe that certain types of music for are only for certain types of people and that you have to understand at a much deeper level to even want to walk in the door and what we say all the time is this is the music that you listen to on the street this is the music to that your parents listen to. This is what your grandparents listen to. And one of the examples of that is we just had the pop singer Betty Who sing with the orchestra. And Betty Who only does pop. She doesn't do any classic American music. <laughs> okay. And I called her management and I said, I've got a crazy thing to talk to you about. <laughs> and the minute she heard about the offer, she was crying because she'd always wanted to sing with orchestra. Yeah. And what we did in order to bridge that gap is we actually made mashups of classical Porter songs songs with her modern day pop dance music. No way. And it worked. And the amazing thing is when you looked into that audience, you saw a huge cross section of DC. Um, everybody that was going to go out right after that, you know, have their their few drinks and get dancing until 2 a.m. to the folks that just, you know, finished watching Lawrence Welk reruns on PBS. Hey, those aren't bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> one day I'll have that like four foot baton, you yeah, know, and, and a one and a two. Exactly. Exactly. And a magic organ. Right. So. That's, that is so cool. But that's just one of the things. Another thing we do that's really um, keeping, I think, younger people engaged in a different way is we actually start an entire series of yoga with chamber orchestra. You know, we hmm. we looked into D.C. and there is a huge cross section of people that are into fitness And that's an ever-growing trend, and it's mostly younger people. And so what I said is, you know, instead of this horrible canned, you know, like rain stick on a CD in a yoga studio, what if we actually get a chamber orchestra to play American popular music, Carole King, Joni Mitchell, um, Plain White Tees, all the way through the whole cross section. And that is a very, we do it in a very meditative version. Mm. And so that's how we bring people. And, you know, we had a sold out crowd with a 200 person waiting list. And wow. so we've expanded those performances this year. And then I also believe, so that's that's two of our series. And mm-hmm. then we have an entire children's series where we're taking Gershwin and Cole Porter and Rodgers and Hammerstein and all these singers who everyone would say kids would never want to listen to that. They just want to listen to the new whatever hit show soundtrack. And we put it in an accessible style where the kids get this music in their ears. Right. And that's the secret is you've got to reach every person where they are. It's not about high art. It's not about low art. It's not about this is for them. This is for them. Mm-hmm. It's about making it for everyone. Oh, you just spoke to my heart, you know, no. I, especially the children's series. I, uh, I can, you know, I'm kind of like the dinosaur <laughs> around where, I, you know, my every Monday through Friday. And I'm actually the dinosaur around here at the station, too, just to say. <laughs> um, so when I hear 
somebody trying to make that connection through music with a, a broad section of individuals, that's something that's enticing, not just to me, but, you know, I could sit next to my son who's 21 and we can jam out together and they don't, you know, it doesn't have to be cursing in the lyrics, but I can, <laughs> you know, say, hey, son, do you know who Rogers and Hammerstein are? You know, he goes, mom, are you going to watch one of those musicals again this weekend? <laughs> you know, so to bring it to the forefront and, and make it snappy, if you will, yeah. you know, make it pop. So that's, you know, that's really something awesome. So being with the American Pops Orchestra, who is arranging this music? I have a whole team of arrangers and orchestrators that work on it all around the country. And the thing is, is that not only do we have our orchestra concerts, but we're the house orchestra for the Hispanic Heritage Awards on PBS, which is mm. a pretty fun thing. We get to reach out to an entirely different community and work with amazing top level Hispanic artists. Um, we also do, we're doing an entire series of outreach concerts in West Virginia for underserved schools, completely free of charge. So we have a team of people. That all being said, we also do benefits for different organizations in town, the Smithsonian, Human Rights First, the Atlantic Council. And so we have so much music and so many shows that we're doing that I have to have a team of people right, working. Right, right, absolutely. So how do people find you so we can add to the, your list? Theamericanpops.org. Okay. We're also on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. You can you can follow us, you can follow me. My Instagram is Frazier's Edge. And um, I like to post things about my daily life. And it's a real <laughs> glimpse into what I do, you know, mm -hmm. nerd and all. So, right. <laughs> or maybe my two Shih Tzu, which make a lot of guest appearances. <laughs> um, we have a really fun event coming up on August 4th, um, which we just added. Going back to that sense of community in all different ages, I'm hosting at my house a big house dance party called Dog Days and Boogie Nights. And we're having we're having two bartenders. Did you tell your neighbors? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, you're on lockdown. Exactly. So it's going to be a fun time of, of craft cocktails and a lot of disco music with live band. And um, so it's going to be one of those start at 8 p.m. and go till the neighbors say, you got to shut it down. Mm -hmm. So nice. get out the hose. And so right? what, what is this event for? Are you raising funds? We for? are raising funds for our West Virginia tour. OK. Um, so, again, it's just finding ways. We also do partnerships with the D.C. Youth Orchestra here in town. So nice. we're all about building those bridges. And what better disco music cocktails and you're helping kids? Okay. I mean, I'm in come for on. the boa. Right. Exactly. <laughs> some gold lame. Yes, Can I thank get you some lame? I, I have some. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't button it up anymore, but it's just flashing. Maybe it might be a neck piece. Who knows? Exactly. <laughs> we're going to repurpose. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, that I'm just I was just over the moon when I heard you guys were going to be speaking with me today, because uh, like I said, before music is so important and and it hits every age group and I know that you know music therapy itself has been proven to awaken minds and to re-stimulate and to you know bring out the the best in an individual uh, I know when my babies were little I used to sing to them and hum and just that rhythmic movement and just the excitement overall so what kinds of Things have you heard from the older audience set about when they come to see a show that you have done? Well, you know, a, a one thing else that I haven't mentioned is that we do actually, you know, we do three to four times as many free concerts as we do paid concerts, oh, okay. which again is a proportion that is uh, pretty unheard of in our world. Mm -hmm. But one of the outreach we do is actually to senior citizens communities. And I specifically uh, retirement centers and, and nursing facilities. And we do mostly music that they're going to immediately relate to. But the folks that come to our main stage concerts, the thing that they take away the most, in my opinion, which I love, is they're so excited that they see young people in the seats next to them. Uh, yeah. So they are, you know, because they worry that this is their whole life. This is music they know and love. And there's a there really is a fear in many older people that it's going to be forgotten. It's their story forgotten. Mm. And so when you look down two seats down and you see a 20 something sitting listening to Cole Porter, that's what gets them excited. And I constantly have that that reaction. Yes. Yeah, you know, and I was I was looking when speaking of Cole Porter, you had said, you know, there's eight misbehaving. Mm -hmm. But you said, let's misbehave. Let's misbehave. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, how does that happen? Well, I mean, that's the that's a great Cole Porter song that's not done as much and it's really naughty. And that's again what gave me this idea because all the music was paired with dating app messages. 
Um, so behind, we had all these voiceovers, and all of these great Cole Porter pieces were paired with crazy dating app messages. Because again, <laughs> and the nice thing was, is all these young people are living that daily. You know, right. if I hear any more of my colleagues talking about the Tinder date that went bad, or the, right. you know, or as we always joke, the farmers only that went bad. So <laughs> city folk just don't understand. <laughs> So, um, but, uh, you know, that's their connection. And the older folks just get a blush a little bit and laugh Mm -hmm. because, you know, they hear about it. Um, Of course, there is our time. So, you know, I'm not getting paid for any of this promotion. Right. Just a side note, but would like to. Right. Right. (laughs) um, But we paired it all with that. And um, it was a lot of fun. Um, how do people uh, donate to your organization? Where where can they find you? What kinds of needs do you have? Yeah, well, theamericanpops.org has an easy donate link. We have a need to support our children's outreach. We have a need. We have a huge um, program for veterans as well and victims of domestic violence where we provide musical experiences for them free of charge. We provide them uh, the ability to come to all our after parties and meet all the artists. And we believe that they should have prime seats at our concerts. You know, so often there are comp seats given away in the back of the house or to get right. the last minute to fill in. And we actually block off free seats throughout the entire house so that wow. it's it's really about that opportunity. We have combat nurses that are part of this program. So we, nice. we offer this cross section and that's something they can support. Um, we have a college vocal competition that promotes all of this music living on through colleges, which again, we premiered last year and we had almost a full house. But all of this takes the support of the community. And we like to think that because we do three to four times as many free concerts, um, that we give back any money that's given to us. It's an in and out the door kind of thing. You know, that donation is not only going to support live music, but it's going to make a difference in people's lives. Have you reached out to any of our community schools to get our kids, you know, excited about orchestra? Um, you know, I just I always think when I see my friends posting on Facebook about, you know, for me, their grandchildren, um, <laughs> you know, going to the concert and they have their typical white shirt and their black pants or skirt and they get up there and they sing a song and they clap. I mean, I, I, I don't find the energy that exciting as it used to be. Exactly. Maybe it's because I'm not standing on the riser. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, for me, it's not about but, just that one performance. You know, I want them to have fun doing it. Right. I want them to get excited. And so for us, the working with the DC Youth Orchestra, which has a huge footprint in the DC schools, we also do uh, the music for the Standing Ovation Awards which is the local teachers awards for DC public schools. And this past year, my orchestra played with the orchestra from the school without walls in DC. And we did a partnership. And then we also worked with the DC honor chorus um, for that event. So we're always looking for ways. And you know, one of the other things that's unique about our group is we never perform in tuxedos, no matter the concert, you never (laughs) walk out and see us in what I call the penguin outfit. Uh Um, so like our last concert, the Cole Porter were dressed in jeans and button ups and blazers and the kids, the kids shows, we always dress fun because Uh again, I think for kids to get them excited, they have to see that it's people like them making music. You know, right. they're rolling out of bed and they're practicing their tiny violin. Right. And they're excited because they think they could do it with us. I will also say two years ago at one of our kids shows, I was actually playing the piano for the show conducting. And a couple of the kids actually wandered up onto the stage <laughs> and sat with me at the <laughs> oh, piano. My goodness. And you know what? We rolled with it. Oh, um, that is so awesome. Now, how many times are parents <laughs> going to go to a kid's concert where they're, the orchestra's cool with that? Right. You know, but that's that's my group, too, is they love it. Uh, you know, they're they're professional orchestra musicians and they want to see it live on. And how are you going to do it if you don't get kids excited? Mm-hmm, absolutely. You know, I that vision. And it's just pretty funny. Don't hit that key, honey. You, right. <laughs> you can sit next to right. me, but don't My touch. My newest arranger. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that note was meant to be in there. Exactly. You know, we're good. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I'm speaking with Maestro Luke, Luke Frazier, and we're talking about the American Pops Orchestra today and all the exciting, fun things that you guys do. Um, one of my visions was to always sing with a... Um, uh, strings to sing with strings they they're just so beautiful and to sing with an orchestra so maybe one day when i get my pipes back in order i might give you a call hey cuz they are so rusty there's room in the inn there's room in the inn <laughs> <laughs> and you know i um 
I think that the more we talk about music in a positive, fun environment, and it, it's going to make people happy. You know, and if our parents are driving around this, you know, this morning or, you know, you're at home, whatever it is, you know, go ahead and pick that violin back up or that saxophone or that trumpet and and just play and just go and just to know it can be fun. So many kids and it just really upsets me. Parents, don't force your children. Please don't force them. Let the magic happen and you'll be surprised. You know, it's I love that they would introduce an instrument to their child, but forcing them, it just doesn't work. Um, our firstborn, you know, all about it. Uh, our second born, yeah, there was a way to get out of something. <laughs> <laughs> Until he had to show up at the end of the year wearing a, the penguin suit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, pretending he was ch- playing the drums back there, you know. <laughs> After middle school, we were done. But the older one, all the way through high school and playing the tuba, for myself, playing all the way through high school. And I found it very interesting because... Uh, for you vocalists out there who do play an instrument, use your instrument as a guide. I was the worst improv. Yeah, you know, how do you say the word? Improvisational player. Yeah, but it was in my head. I mean, they were. It was just there, but I could get it out with my voice. And so they they marry so much. Absolutely. You know? you know, for me, I started piano first, and I played all the way through. And, but then I started singing and I, you know, I sing for fun. I did some karaoke this weekend, Um, (laughs) but uh, thank God none of your listeners were hopefully there. Um, But I sang all the way through and I work with a lot of singers. And again, exactly what you said. Um, First off, never force your kids. You know, I was very fortunate. My parents are neither one musicians, but I had amazing public school teachers all the way through Mm. who always made music exciting for me. And I was so lucky that that I had that inspiration and they were insistent that it was, you know, they made it challenging, which Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, you know, too often it's all about only making it fun for kids. But look at anything kids do. It's about finding that thing where they can excel and feel a sense of place. And so it not only has to be fun, but it has to be quality. And I was very fortunate that I that I had that all the way through. Um, But yes, it's. That's how I got into it. And I think that, you know, anytime I get to work with kids, it's one of those things that just helping them find that pursuit to excellence, but also having a great time doing it. It usually right. involves a lot of jokes, as you can probably tell. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. I mean, you're giving me flashbacks, you know, back to high school. But you can never take yourself too seriously. No. You Life's know, too short. And But we were good. We were really yeah. good. I grew up in Northern California and um, I, talking about a teacher, um, we had a great instructor. I mean, he was just fantastic but there'd be some little shenanigans going on you know trumpet players and drummers we get in trouble all the time but (laughs) when it was time to play we played exactly and it was beautiful and everybody was knew each other's part and it was just magic when i think today you know um talk about a little bit of old fogey but you know apple just came out with that new thing to tell you (laughs) to tell you when you spend too much time on your phone and i think you know musicians playing an instrument, singing, you can't be on your phone while you're playing that instrument. You can't be on your phone while you're singing those songs. Mm -hmm. It's a way to just be in the moment. And I think for so many people in this crazy world and in this crazy region, which is always teeming with, you know, I've got to get to this game and I've got to go to that and I've got to do this and that and that dinner and that party. It's a way to just sit down and maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 15 minutes and say, I'm just going to be here right now. I'm not going to let anything come in my way, and I'm just going to collect my thoughts. I'm going to play this music. And again, adults who maybe played an instrument and just want to come back to it or start lessons late, Mm -hmm. do it. You know, Mm -hmm. go get a guitar. Um, Go take a piano lesson. And it doesn't have to be that you're going to go play a concerto or sit in with the orchestra. It's about just being being with that for a little bit. How many members are in your orchestra? What's cool is that it flexes. So it can go okay. all the way from a trio all the way up to 40 players. So we typically don't do any more than 40. Um, but that's that's kind of the range you'll see. And again, one of the things I'm really careful about is that specifically uh, people see and experience different instruments. So in each concert, I write feature pieces for the instruments. Mm-hmm. So one concert, you're going to hear a big solo on the harp. One concert, you're going to hear a big solo on the trumpet, on the flute, on the clarinet, on the viola, which mm-hmm. on the cello. You know, you're going to hear different things. And again, for people sitting in the audience who 
everyone always says, oh, I can't pick out that instrument from that instrument. Um, or I hear that so many times. I don't know a cello from a, you know, a mm-hmm. clarinet. And it's so nice to say, well, now you know that sound. And also what's cool in our group is they know that player. Because right. we always are having our players get to know folks and, and uh, build That's that relationship. Neat. Now, how do people find you again? Where What's your the website? TheAmericanPops.org. And also on social media, on Facebook, The American Pops, or on uh, Instagram, Twitter. We've got it all. Or Fraser's Edge on Instagram for me, uh, if you want to follow along. And we, we keep it updated. Like I said, we've got that August uh, disco party, house party. Mm-hmm. And we also just launched yesterday our membership series, which is a pretty cool, we didn't want to do a subscription model because me, like, uh, you know, so many other people in this area, I don't know where I'm going to be next week. Right. You know, and so when you buy those things, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't want to spend that much money. So with our model, you pay a small fee and you get a discount to every show, no matter what you pick, you get discounts to the after parties. And so it's really meant for that modern working professional who says, I want to become a part of this organization and keep it on my radar. Mm -hmm. And also part of that membership goes to support our community outreach. Oh, great. So, you know, you're doing all these good things and you get a discount on all the shows. So that's all on our website, theamericanpops.org and on our social media. Um, so come become a part of our family. That's what we're that's what we're looking for. <laughs> I, I you know, I um, my head is just spinning. I'm just so excited. I, I I think that a lot of our listeners hopefully have been, should I say, reawakened uh, to come out and hear an orchestra. And what is it? It's not your grandma's orchestra. Exactly. Or your grandpa's it's not a orchestra. gray hair orchestra. It's not a gray I say. hair. But gray hairs are allowed. Right. Hey, Arctic Actually, Blonde I'm is I'm getting so, them in the temples. Arctic Blonde is a cool thing. Arctic you know, Blonde. Arctic Blonde works. <laughs> so don't even try right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be singing with you in the audience. Right, you know? right. Um, so it's not about exclusion. It's about inclusion. Absolutely. And it's about having fun. I want parents to bring their younger ones. Yes. To the you know older shows. Is it appropriate? There's no inappropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's it's funny, you know. And again, that's the when we had our big Aretha show at the beginning of this last season. We had a huge, it was basically became a dance party by the end. I mean, people were clapping and dancing in the aisles. They can and, dance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, again, this is it's even more exciting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, what's the worst that can happen? We have a great time. It's right. kind of my philosophy on all this. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, bring out the kids. There's nothing, you know. <laughs> inappropriate. Exactly. Okay. Well, you know, because some adults might think, you know, oh my gosh, it's the eight o'clock hour. It's my hour. You know, anything after a certain time, the kids are not allowed. But, you know, it's, there are shows for the younger ones that you do have. And it's just about introducing them yes. to great music. And I love that. I really love that a lot. Is there anything else you'd like to share, you know, with our listeners? Please go ahead and, and, and do it for me. So our big season opening concert is September 22nd at Arena, and it's a singer-songwriter celebration. So Nina Simone, Joni Mitchell, Carol King, yeah. James Taylor. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, we've got a really great um, a Luther Vandross program we're doing over at the ARC in partnership with the ARC and Howard University, which we're very excited about. We're also doing our college vocal competition, and we're closing out our big season of big shows with a big Jerry Herman feature. So, hello, Dolly, La Caja Fall. Mm-hmm. Um, then we've got a three-series uh, kid series, and we've got a three-series yoga series. So we've got a 10-show season, but again, September 22nd is that big season opening thing. Mm-hmm. But again, if you want to get your groove on on August 4th, we'd love <laughs> to see you. You get to meet me. You get to meet my dogs. You get to have a great craft cocktail. Um, But yeah, check out AmericanPops.org and you can see all of this. Like we said, it really, every show is all ages. Kids can come to the yoga shows. You know, I know a lot of kids are getting into yoga now. Mm -hmm. Come with their parents. Again, it's about family. No, it's a drop off. Exactly. (laughs) We'll just throw up a ball pit and call it a night, right? (laughs) Get your mat. (laughs) Right. But yeah, Yeah. come out and check out. It's for everybody. Um, We just, like I said, it's about building a family and building a community. And that's what we're here to do. At the concerts, come up and say hi. There's no wall. Like I said, I'm not, 
one of the maestros who's going to hop in a car and, and whisk away. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's I'm too busy to be bothered. Mm -hmm. I want to meet you. I want to know what people are excited about. And that way I can keep listening to my audiences. There you go. Well, thank you, Maestro Luke Frazier. It's been an <laughs> absolute pleasure to have you here today with me. As I always say to our listeners before wrapping up, staying in touch to keep you in touch here on Intercom Radio DC.